Lecture 4 Why Can't You Let Your Subordinates Occupy Your Time Casually, Part 1 Do you ever wish you had an extra 12 hours in a day, and that you could just wind yourself up and keep working without ever getting tired? The reality is that limited time and energy are problems that every one of us faces, but CEOs face a unique set of challenges. While time management tools like the Pomodoro Technique can help regular people improve their efficiency, CEOs face demands that far exceed their time and energy, and no amount of efficiency can solve the problem. The severity of the problem is also different. If a regular person has poor time management, they can work overtime, sleep less, or let their home become a mess. If a CEO has poor time management, the entire company can suffer, and it can even affect the life or death of a company. Therefore, what CEOs face is not a time management problem, but a resource allocation problem, and this is definitely something that needs to be elevated to the level of company strategy. So, what should these superhuman CEOs do? 1. Spend time on subordinates who don't need you. A CEO of a startup complained to me about not having enough time and energy. I asked him, how many hours a day do you spend on tasks that truly drive the company's development? He immediately replied, four to six hours. I looked at him seriously and asked, are you sure? He thought for a moment and said, two hours. Well, maybe one hour. This answer surprised him and he immediately resolved to spend four hours a day on important matters. However, he couldn't even stick to it for two days. At that time, his company had only 30-something employees and an annual profit of several million. Everyone knows that time and energy should be invested in the most important things, but few CEOs and executives can do it. What you may not realize is that executives and CEOs are the easiest people to be hijacked. The team's needs, unexpected events, and endless meetings can easily consume all their time and energy. Returning to this company, three years later, the company was ready to go public, and its business had spread across the country. During a conversation, I asked him, you're not as busy as before, are you? He said yes. He was busy but not chaotic, not blindly busy. I asked him, why? He replied, because I have learned to let go, not be greedy, not micromanage, only focus on important things and important people. You may have noticed that the most important thing in managing time and energy is not to improve efficiency but to become your own master and not become a busy slave. So how do you achieve this? In management, it's all about managing people and managing things, so let's explore these two aspects. Let's start with people. If you are a manager, who would you spend your time on? For example, there are two team members, one is very capable and hardworking, and you don't need to worry about them at all, the other is rough and needs help. Who should you spend your time on? By instinct, we tend to be with the person who needs, us the most, right? So most managers will go to help the person who needs improvement first. You can imagine that doing so, seeing them improve, will give you a sense of accomplishment and make you feel fulfilled. But I want to tell you that such managers are destined to be mediocre. Mediocre managers face the world with instinct, while excellent managers are always cautious about instinct and may even deliberately choose the opposite way. Returning to our question, the person who needs you the least is often the person you should pay the most attention to because the return on investment in them is much higher than in those who need you. This is like investing in your strengths, which always yields greater returns than repairing your weaknesses. But you may say, he doesn't need me, how can I invest in him? The simplest way is to ask them, what do you want me to do to support you and help you do better? This simple question will help you discover what this seemingly unnecessary person really needs and bring great returns. One of my executive clients discovered in such a conversation that the project approval process was hindering his subordinates from doing better, and only he could change the process. If he hadn't asked, he wouldn't have thought of it himself, and everyone's performance would have improved. 
In fact, in management, sometimes asking the right question and doing the right thing can bring huge improvements in performance. These are the areas where you should invest your energy first. Here's another question for you. If a team member comes to you actively to discuss work issues, what would you do? Would you drop everything and discuss it immediately? If you do, you may be a good boss, but you may not be an efficient manager. Before I became an executive coach, I was such a good boss. At that time, I was responsible for the Asia-Pacific business of an international company. A frontline salesperson often came to me to consult on various communication issues, looking very positive. I thought she was a hard-working employee and spent a lot of time helping her. Later, I realized it was wrong. She was a politically savvy person who didn't work hard but worked hard to create a positive and proactive image. I'm not citing my own example to say that good bosses may encounter similar special situations, but to say that behind these special situations, there is a necessary logic. Good bosses, like me, always react passively to the outside world, so those, crying children, and, performing children, will steal my time and build a virtual image for me. Efficient managers take the initiative to manage their time and are not led by others. They often see different things and discover the real contributors who are truly working hard. So, how can you do it specifically? Communicate with excellent team members first, then deal with problematic members. If a team member wants to talk to you in depth, you need to plan ahead. You may not seem as approachable, but it's important to set rules, my time cannot be divided by you at will, and I cannot be at your beck and call. Of course, this is just a suggestion, and you need to adjust it according to your work needs. For example, in a company that does international infrastructure projects, when there are unexpected situations in a project and executives are uncertain about certain decisions, they must immediately go to the CEO because these decisions have a significant impact not only economically but also politically. In short, the key is for the CEO's time not to be hijacked but to be selectively spent on important people. 